Okay guys, today we're going to talk about using a SQL variant in SIS packages. And I'm not going to launch into my diatribe about using SQL variant at all, right? So uh, it is what it is. You've got a database that's got a SQL variant column and now we're forced to ETL it across, right? So, you know, there are a couple different ways you can you can handle this. Let's go into here real quick. And what you get here, and this is the error you get, right? That uh, it references an external data type that cannot be mapped, right? Okay, so <coughs> that's because SIS doesn't really have a concept of the SQL, of the SQL variant type. So it maps it to the uh, the Unicode, the DT Western. Okay, so uh, that's fine, but we've got this we've got this warning here. Now, that's all it is is a warning, right? If I run this, it'll actually run. Okay, so it's not like uh, the package is going to die without it. Um, it might, <laughs> you know, depending on what it's being put to, you may need to adjust your your metadata. And that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to show you how to adjust your metadata to fix this problem a little bit. So if you right click on this guy and then go to advanced editor, you can come here and you can see the output. And it's the output columns that you're looking for. And in this case, we've got our build. And assuming that uh, the data is longer than 255, right? You could change that right here. You could change it to a string if you wanted to, but that's not going to get you what you're uh, doing right now. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. But <clears throat> you're not going to be able to put it into a SQL variant column on the other side. So if you've got SQL variant in your source, and then you're and then you're keeping SQL variant in your destination. Then you need to keep this as Unicode. If you've got all one type of data and somebody used SQL variant in your source for some odd reason, and you don't really have any Unicode data, then you're then you're welcome to convert this to a string, right? The problem is is you will have some problems with this if you just convert it here, right? So. I mean, if I just change this to string here, I'm going to be in the same shape. It's going to say that, you know, you can't convert uh, Unicode data to string, and that'll give you an actual error. So what we need to do in this case is we need to change uh, how the actual data is coming in, right? So uh, I've got this right here. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. And I'll go back. There we go. So now when I double click on this guy again, I'm going to change from SQL command. I mean, I'm going to change that from that. And now I'm going to change this to invarcar uh, right here. So this way, I've got invarcar255. I'm just doing an explicit cast right here, right? Um, <clears throat> if I wanted to change that to a string, I would I would change it to varcar, right? So now I've got that in there. You notice how this has gone away now, right? It's no longer telling me that it can't it can't do the conversion because the data is coming in from the query as Unicode as a as a data type that SIS understands. So <clears throat> I've gotten rid of that one. Now I've got to get rid of this one. And unfortunately, there's just no way to do that because my destination right now is still SQL variant. Um, like I said, in order for me to get rid of this one here, I would have to change it to invarcar as well, right? So uh, you can see I've still got this same error right there. we got the same error, but everything still works, right? So if I were to hit play on this, there we go, it goes in just fine. But, you know, we don't like these little guys right here, right? We don't like the warning signs. So I would advise, if you can get away with it, change your destination to something other than SQL variant, like, oh hell, anything would be better, right? Uh, Invarcar Max uh, is a really good way to deal with that, I think. Um, but change that to anything, just because 
these guys used a bad data type doesn't mean we have to propagate that throughout the rest of the system and then you only have to use it in this one place right uh, another way you could do this would be to use the uh, um, would be to use the uh, derived column unfortunately that's not going to get rid of this guy right here but you could use derived column to change this to you know whatever you needed to even if you needed to shorten it right so you can also use derived column to get around that um, let's see uh, I guess that's about it uh, there are a couple more things I could do oh yeah so if you're going from one system uh, from one database to another database on the same box then you can also get around this error by uh, just doing an insert select directly from a SQL statement right so uh, it would look something like this oh sorry I gotta go here for that so that would look like this execute SQL task there we go so I would say connection we're gonna connect a test box there we go SQL statement and it would just be something like this uh, insert db1 dot dot table select star from db2 dot dbo dot table it would look like that right just a simple little insert statement um, that you would use to, to run that thing and just get around that whole problem altogether and then you get rid of this of this caution flag right um, and uh, or you could do that in an SP and then just call this SP from here there's a number different of different ways you could use to circumvent this because like I said as DBAs we don't really like to see this caution flag on there we like to see all nice and green but you know sometimes we have to deal with stuff like that when we get when we get bad data personally the way I would deal with this and I know I've said a few things right but the way I would deal with this is I would do whatever it took to change this on the destination and not propagate that bad data type throughout if I don't need it there's no reason to keep propagating it anyway that's all I got talk to you later